A warm welcome back. I'm Sage and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney and this is the Buzzing Trends show. Let's get insight about some top stories of this hour. The S&P ASX 200 is up by 9.70 points to 7,038.50, current at 11.45 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. On wide expectations, a central bank in its policy meeting will hold its cash rate at a record low, despite witnessing a housing boom in economic recovery. Majority of the sectors are in green today, with materials performing the best. Materials sector has been able to show a rebound from its recent decline and is trading at a high of 1.82% today. On that note, let's have a look at some major news affecting the Australian share market movement. Seven West Media Limited, the largest diversified media business of Australia, having extensive presence in television online publishing and broadcasting, has finally signed the deal with the leader in social media, Facebook, and the biggest search engine, Google. The deal is signed for abiding with the new media laws levied in Australia. With Google, the agreement is for five years, whereas with Facebook, the agreement is for three years. Further details of the transaction are not disclosed. This agreement highlights that the US big tech companies will now be paying two of the three top media companies in Australia for their content. Other Australian media companies, the News Corp, has already signed the deal with Google and Facebook, whereas Nine Entertainment, updated about its deal with Google, has been signed, although arrangements with Facebook are under discussion. And now, let's glance at some other important developments. CSL, the Bitcoin giant, is in talks with the Australian government for deciding its future after the completion of COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing. The company has already started producing one million doses of vaccine in a week, but still sees reaching 50 million by 2021's end, a big challenge. The company is in discussions with the government to reassess its manufacturing of other vaccines after the completion of AstraZeneca vaccine campaign as the production of new generation vaccine such as mRNA require significant funding and support. And moving on, Seek Limited along with its subsidiaries help in bridging the gap between job seekers and the employment opportunities in Australia. The company has upgraded its guidance as the operating conditions have improved. Seek ANZ and Seek Asia business have outperformed in revenue terms, adding further fuel for improved guidance declaration. Seek ANZ and Seek Asia are showing great results based on improving macro conditions. Seek looks forward for another update for investors in August this year. And now, Here's the latest news. Vicinity Centres, an Australian real estate investment trust company specialising in ownership and management of Australian shopping centres, is happy to see the increase in the number of centre visitations and growing retail sales during the March quarter. These numbers throw light on Australian economic recovery. The company also updated that it witnessed total portfolio sales in March month was almost near to the pre-COVID levels. The centre visitation growth is corresponding with the improving retail sales. And now let's have a look at some global updates that are in the news today. The WHO will be deciding what will happen to 3 million doses of China's produced COVID-19 vaccines, Sinopharm and Sinovac. With demands increasing in India, the results of the trials of these vaccines conducted in Brazil, Chile and the United Arab Emirates will be assessed by Strategic Advisory Group of Experts, or SAGE. There is a 50% efficacy rate required for the vaccines to be approved and added to the global supply. These Chinese-developed vaccines will be pivotal to the supply in the Indo-Pacific. China has already shipped 100 million doses of both vaccines to Cambodia, Serbia 
and Indonesia, along with 66 other countries. At present, Sinopharm has shown an 86% efficacy rate and has been approved by Indonesia, although there has been some speculation involved with the data provided during the three clinical trials. The trials of Sinovac conducted in Chile showed a 67% efficacy in the prevention of the symptoms of COVID-19 and showed it had the ability to prevent 80% of deaths from the virus. WHO will be finalising the recommendations late on Tuesday. The G7 summit is due to commence in Britain next month and will be the US President Joe Biden's first trip overseas since his inauguration. On the 3rd of May, the first person-to-person -person meeting since 2019 saw the G7 foreign ministers meeting held in London between Dominic Raab, Britain's foreign secretary and US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. The G7 has been a long-running summit of the West's richest nations, including France, Canada, Germany, Italy, Japan and Britain, as well as the United States. At this year's meeting, delegates from Australia, South Korea, India and South Africa will also be invited to attend. Main topics on the agenda will relate to responding to Russian disinformation and for more democracy from China and to implement a strategy to maintain open markets with the powerhouse nation. The G7 has been running since 1975 and the foreign ministry believe it is required not to hold down China but to spread a message of multilateralism after the shock and alarm caused by former US President Donald Trump's Twitter politics. And that's all for now. Thank you for your time watching and this is Sage signing off.